Today's video is dedicated to the island of Lanzarote, one of the most extraordinary destinations in Spain and there we say in part of Europe as well. Everything you need to know to organize the perfect trip to Lanzarote is in this basic travel guide. Hola, I am Tony Galvez from Road Trip Spain and Portugal, where we help you plan the perfect trip with practical information and insider tips. Do forgive me if I switch between the local pronunciation Lanzarote and the English Lanzarote throughout the video. Let's have a look at the summary of the video and let's get started. Why Lanzarote? Usually in our videos we do not dedicate a special section to explain why you should visit such and such destination, mainly because they are usually well known and their attractions speak for the destination, but we think that the case of Lanzarote is different. The reasons why you should visit one of the most incredible corners of Spain need to be underlined. We'll give you just two reasons. The first one is that it is a completely different destination to what you are used to visiting. Lanzarote is a volcanic island where geology has shaped an extraordinary landscape of volcanoes and lava fields, where there are no rivers, no forests, there is little vegetation, but where, despite all this, human activity has managed to thrive. If you like nature, you must visit Lanzarote because it is an island of superlative landscapes. The second reason is that Lanzarote is an island where one person, the local artist Cesar Manrique, experimented with very modern ideas of what tourism development and respect for nature should be. And on these principles, a tourist proposal was built that has nothing to do with so many other coastal regions of Spain. Not everything is perfect in Lanzarote but when you visit the island, you will realize how the inhabitants of Lanzarote have chosen to follow a path that only now, in the 21st century, so many other destinations wish to follow. So if you're looking for a destination unlike anything you've seen before, if you want to be dazzled by unforgettable landscapes, if you want to delight in the local cuisine, and if you're attracted by a place with lower costs than the peninsula, put Lanzarote on your radar. Let's first talk about how to get to Lanzarote. Lanzarote is an island that forms part of the archipelago of the Canary Islands, a part of the Spanish territory that lies off the west coast of Africa, more or less at the level of the Sahara Desert. It has a population of approximately 150,000 inhabitants. For those who want to visit the island from the Iberian Peninsula or other departure points in Europe, the best way to do so is by plane. From Madrid to Lanzarote there are approximately 1500 kilometers and the approximate flight time is two hours and a half. As you will now see on the screen, there are many flights to Lanzarote, departing from both Spanish and many other European airports. Lanzarote is a very touristy destination, which explains the large number of air connections. The main airlines operating in Spain, both low-cost and non-low-cost, fly to Lanzarote from several airports. In the description of the video, we are going to put a link to the page where you can consult all these air connections. Lanzarote Airport is on the south coast of the island, near Arrecife, its capital. The full name is Cesar Manrique Lanzarote Airport, a tribute to the island's most illustrious son, and its code is ACE. A -C -E. Public transport out of the airport is not spectacular. There's one bus line to Arrecife and another one to Puerto del Carmen and Playa Blanca. To get anywhere else, you'll need a taxi, private transfer or hired car. By sea, you could reach Lanzarote by ferry from Cadiz on a trip lasting more than 24 hours and arriving in Arrecife, the capital of the island. The company operating the service is Armas. There are also frequent ferries from the nearby island of Fuerteventura to Playa Blanca in the south of Lanzarote. Now let's talk about a very important decision, when to visit Lanzarote. The good news is that the island can be visited all year round. Lanzarote has a climate that some 
authors describe as desert climate and others as tropical, semi-arid Mediterranean. Although there are some differences throughout the year, it never gets cold in Lanzarote, which is why it's a popular destination for people from Northern Europe during the cold winter months in those latitudes. The hottest months of the year coincide with the summer on the Iberian Peninsula, July, August and September. Another very important feature of the weather in Lanzarote is the absence of rainfall. Rainfall is non-existent in some months of the year and the little rainfall that does occur falls in the winter months. On our recent trip to the island we witnessed a few drops of rain falling for approximately 30 seconds. That was all. Another very characteristic feature of the island is the presence of the wind, a northerly wind which is almost constant throughout the year, although it blows a little stronger in the summer months. It is a humid wind that can make you feel chilly at times. If you visit Lanzarote, you should be ready for the wind. It is also important to know that the number of daylight hours changes throughout the year, with fairly long days between May and August and shorter days between November and February. The longer the daylight hours, the more you will get out of your trip. Before identifying the best time of the year to visit Lanzarote, we need to take a final look at the tourist season on the island. High season in Lanzarote used to include the months of November to March, when Northern Europeans visit, and July and August, when Northern visitors are joined by Spanish visitors. Low season months are April to June and September to October. Our favorite times of the year to visit Lanzarote would be spring and fall, with longer days and cheaper prices. However, since COVID-19, it would seem there is no longer a low season in Lanzarote. During our last visit, in the month of June, theoretically the lowest of seasons on the island, everyone we talked to mentioned the high numbers of tourists on the island unheard of before the pandemic. We don't know whether once the rush to travel again settles, the low season in Lanzarote will eventually look the same it used to do in the past. I know that you have chosen your travel dates, you may be wondering how many days should I book for Lanzarote. By now you will have realized how far away Lanzarote is and how much of an investment it is to get to the island. On top of that, Lanzarote is full of sensational places to visit. That's why we wouldn't recommend you to go if you cannot dedicate it a minimum of five days. For a stay with enough time to see all the must-see places, our recommendation would be a full week in Lanzarote. We've been twice to Lanzarote, both times for an entire week, and both times we ran out of time to do all the things we wanted to do. Choosing your accommodation is one of the most important and expensive decisions of any trip. The island of Lanzarote is not that big and it's never going to take you much more than an hour to get to any point of interest on the island if you are getting around by car. Points which, as you will see now on the screen, are scattered all over the island. Let's take a look at the regions where the main concentrations of hotels and accommodation are located to give you an idea of what they are like. Arrecife is the capital of the island. Its great advantage is that it has many services, a strategic location and cheaper prices. And the disadvantage is that it is probably one of the least charming places on the island. Playa Onda is located between Arrecife and the airport. It has a long beach and a pleasant promenade. Its advantage is its strategic location. Its disadvantage is that it looks like a large villa state. Puerto del Carmen is the most touristic area of the island. Its advantage is that it has many services and a lively nightlife, as well as its strategic location. Its disadvantage is that it is an extremely touristy place with all that mass tourism entails. Puerto Calero is next to Puerto del Carmen and is a marina with a rather exclusive profile with several high-class hotels. It is a good place for those looking for luxury but with above average prices. Playa Blanca is at one end of Lanzarote. Among its advantages, it has a very complete hotel infrastructure and some very beautiful beaches. Its main disadvantage is its location. Being at one end of the island, you are forced to travel more kilometers to visit the other side of Lanzarote. Yaiza and San Bartolomé are two small towns in the interior of Lanzarote. We present them together because they share similar characteristics, an inland village feel and a good location. Their main disadvantage is that you won't find many hotels in them. 
Caleta de Famara is a small inhabited village in front of what is probably the most spectacular beach of Lanzarote, Famara. It is a destination where the wind blows strong, and that is why it is a big favorite with surfers. Its disadvantage is that it is a bit isolated and there is a little accommodation available. Teguise was the former capital of Lanzarote and its advantages are its location and the quiet inland atmosphere. On the downside, it does not have many hotels. Aria is another rural destination, a beautiful inland village for those looking for peace and quiet. Don't expect big hotels or a lot of tourist infrastructure. Its location is a bit distant from other parts of the island. Orthola is a fishing village on the northern tip of Lanzarote. It is the gateway to the neighboring island of La Graciosa. It does not have many hotels and its location on the tip of the island is a disadvantage. Arrieta and Punta Mujeres are two small fishing villages quite close to each other, quiet destinations without big hotels but with a location a bit off the central axis of the island. Finally, Costa Teguise is a modern development on the coast with great beaches, large hotels and a family-friendly profile. The location is good but we wouldn't choose it if you're looking for a place that doesn't look like a tourist destination. This has been our overview of the main places to stay in Lanzarote. There are other accommodations options in the interior of the island that we have not mentioned as we have preferred to focus on the most important ones. As mentioned above, the island is not that big, however, if we could choose and for those who were planning to spend their days touring the island, we would stay in the region you are about to see on the map, simply because logistically, staying in the center of the island is a great advantage. In the description of the video, we will place links to accommodation in the regions mentioned, so you can do your own research. And if you find an option that suits you, and you want to know our opinion, you just have to ask. Let's talk about how to get around Lanzarote, an island that, in our opinion, is a destination to be explored by car. This is because, as in other destinations with extraordinary landscapes, Iceland springs to mind. The possibility of reaching any part of the island and being able to stop at any time and place seems to us to be simply non-negotiable. Lanzarote is a wilderness destination and as such is best appreciated when you control where you go, where you stop and for how long. The main car hire companies that you find in other parts of Spain also have offices in Lanzarote. The most convenient way is to pick up the car at the airport on arrival and return it at the airport the day you leave. The two times we've been to Lanzarote, we rented a car with a local company, Cabrera Medina, and the experience was very positive. We highly recommend it. A final tip, you don't need a four-wheel drive, a basic model will do. The immense majority of the roads you are going to take are paved. There are just a handful of dirt tracks where you can safely drive your car. If for whatever reason you don't drive or don't want to drive Lanzarote's buses, known on the island as Wawas, have lines to many parts of Lanzarote. In the description of the video, we will put a link so you can have a look at them. We didn't use the buses, so we won't be able to share much advice about them. If you are planning to visit those parts of Lanzarote where the bus goes, you might be interested in staying in Arrecife, the starting point of many bus lines. Besides that, you will have to. On the one hand, you will need to be very well informed about the routes and the timetables. And on the other hand, you will have to spend much more time in Lanzarote than you would need if you were traveling by your own transport. The bus schedule sometimes can be very, very limited. There are also agencies that organize tours around the island. We will also leave links to them in the description of the video. For such a small island, Lanzarote has an incredible number of attractions, but before we mention them, we wanted to make an important point. Don't think of Lanzarote as a beach destination, not because it doesn't have beaches, which it does, and lots of them, and not because some of those beaches are not beautiful, which they are. But because the really incredible thing about Lanzarote are not the beaches. If you're thinking of a relaxing holiday on a spectacular beach, you might be better off heading to the Balearic Islands. Now, if you book a week in Lanzarote, as well as touring the island, you are sure to have a few days left over to enjoy the beach if that's what you're looking for. Let's go to the map to see the location of the main attractions on the island. We are going to talk about the main attractions in detail, but we will do so in another video of the channel, explaining what to do in Lanzarote. When the video is ready, you will see the link in the video description. 
we designed and tested an itinerary by car with four stages of one day each, covering every corner of the island. We will publish this car route in five videos, one with an overview of the route and four dedicated to each day of the route. You will find links to these videos in the video description once they are ready. With those four days, you will get to visit most places of interest in the island. If you like to eat well and eat differently, Lanzarote is going to be a delight because the gastronomy of the Canary Islands in general and Lanzarote in particular is very different from what we eat on the mainland. In the video we dedicate to the gastronomy of Lanzarote, we tell you about the main dishes of the local cuisine and you will also see our recommendations for restaurants on the island. We've reached the end of the video, but before we finish, here are two more practical facts about Lanzarote that you need to know. The first one is the time. The official time in the Canary Islands is always one hour behind mainland Spain and the Balearic Islands. At 9 o'clock on the mainland, it is 8 o'clock in the Canary Islands. The second fact is that in the Canary Islands, of which Lanzarote is a part, there is no VAT, the Spanish Value Added Tax. Instead, IGIC, I -G -I -C, is applied, which is the general Canarian indirect tax. The general rate of which, at the time of recording this video, is 7%. We hope we have given you all the essential information you need to prepare for a trip to Lanzarote. We have tried to cover all the basic necessities for those who are just starting to dream of a trip. And just in case you haven't noticed, we are passionate about the Lanzarote. As soon as we leave the island, we begin planning our return. On the screen you will now see another video that we believe will make your trip to Lanzarote much easier. Don't miss it. Atemash, hasta la próxima. See you soon.